Hey, what's going on guys? It's me Vexian and today I'm gonna be going over how to win every single round on attack and Rainbow Six Siege And therefore this is gonna help you win more games now I encourage you to stay to the end of this video because I'm going to explain some high-level concepts throughout the video and it'll all culminate into the end of the video Which is going to make a lot more sense when we get there So I, I encourage you to watch that because that is going to be exponentially helpful for you in your games going forward on attack Let's get into it. So while getting into this we need to understand a two high-level topics Number one is respect in regards to map control, and number two is tempo. Now, number one, you hear this a lot on Valorant and CSGO broadcasts, not so much in Siege, even though it's kind of more prevalent in Siege, it's not brought up as much on broadcasts. And this is going to be respect in regards to territory held by your opponent. On attack, it is your job to get into the bomb site and plant the diffuser. This is your win condition that you're trying to achieve all the time. And the defenders have territory on the map that you have to respect because of the one-shot headshot mechanic. You can't run in willy-nilly because that's not how the game works. With lack of information, that's going to lead to your death, and more prominently, you getting shot in the head. And because your life is incredibly valuable in Siege, you don't want that to happen. And therefore, you have to respect your opponent's territory. Now, how this revolves around tempo, there's a certain tempo attackers play with so that they can respect the enemy territory in full. What I mean by that is on attack, you drone, you drone in your entry fragger, you be incredibly thorough and methodical around the map so that you don't miss drone defenders. And the reason that you don't want to miss drone defenders is because a role and a position on defense is to roam. The roamers are meant to be an X factor variable that has to be dealt with. If you don't deal with them, they can flank and cause headache late in the round. Or if you do deal with them, they can just cause headache and jest because you have to take gun fights with them. And that could cost an unfavorable trade in your way. So you have to take caution and you have to treat the map with respect in regards to attack. Therefore, the tempo, which is unanimously agreed upon, it's kind of a silent rule of siege, on attack is to be relatively slow. The only case this is not true is when you have information regarding the fact that the territory that you're supposed to respect, no one is holding it, therefore you don't have to respect the simple rules of engagement that are kind of unspoken in siege, and therefore you can increase the tempo on your side taking map control, therefore the defenders now have to respect your map control. Kind of a high-level concept, I know. And I'm going to tell you how to exploit this concept and exploit this mutual respect between attacker and defender and how to always swing the tempo into your favor in terms of speed. Number one is unpredictability. When you are doing this, when you're doing this type of rush, you need to be unpredictable. You need this to be executed in the first 30 seconds of the round. If not, it will not work. The longer the round goes on, the more you have to respect the defender territory because you've not taken any territory meaningful. If you're not going to do a rush in the first 30 seconds of a round, you then need to clear it default and do the default clear, whether it be west over, vertical, north over, whatever you're going to do on that respective map, because the window of opportunity to do this diminishes the further into a round you go. Therefore, it has to be done in a very quick window of time. This is one part of the unpredictability. The second part is the route you take to enter the objective or to enter a high contest area. So what I mean by that is not every area on the map is going to be part of the bomb site. However, it is still going to be defender territory that you have to respect. A great example is if literally any site on a cafe, any adjacent rooms to that site or anything on that floor is respectable defender territory that you have to respect. Therefore, you have to change your tempo accordingly while properly clearing and droning for information. But you don't have to rush directly into the site. You can rush into these high contested areas and then gain the information and or gain the frags, swinging tempo into your favor. A lot of the time doing this is going to be highly risky. So again, at the end of the video, I'm going to have some routes that is going to mitigate this risk. In addition to this unpredictability, the route that you take to achieve your objective, whether it be to get into these high traffic contest areas or into the site itself, matters. A great example is the rush that I'm going to show on the screen. This is what I have deemed the vaccine rush. There's another really good one on the map Outback, which is not currently in the competitive rotation, so therefore it does not matter. But in this case, this is the vaccine rush. This is on a clubhouse. This rush works 99% of the time in any ELO unless they have a frost which is unfortunate. The principle behind this is that most of the time, the traditional take on here and the unspoken rule and kind of how people have just kind of, you know, developed as, as players and how the meta has developed, a lot of the time you're going to be contesting the wall and garage, meaning that pressure is going to be applied to both garage and the wall. However, there is not much of a reason to contest this window on highway. A lot of people open it to work angles and get picks. So with that in mind, the defenders don't usually take that window as a big deal in terms of the fact that they don't, they're not going to face check it. And most of the time when you're working angles on that window, just the way geometry works, you're not going to be sticking your head in the window. You're going to be playing back a little bit, trying to work the angles toward your advantage, working geometry in your favor. So there's no reason for anyone to watch the window when it gets initially opened. Maybe after five seconds, they'll watch it or after bullets go through or whatever, they'll then watch it. This is what, what I mean by unpredictable. 
is you have to be unpredictable in the sense that you're going to fly through that window. That's an unpredictable thing to do, and it's not something that you can counter. Conversely, you could also fly up red. Flying up red is another unpredictable thing to do. However, it's not favorable. And that's going to be something to talk about in a little bit. But that's point one is unpredictability. You need to be unpredictable in the, the, how fast you're going to be doing this. I just said you need to be doing it in the first 30 seconds of the round. But being in the first 30 seconds of the round does vary. Is it going to be the first 15 of the first 30? Or is it going to be the back half of the first 30 seconds of the round? That's number one in unpredictability. Number two is the route that you take to achieve what you want to do, which is take map advantage and take respect away from the defenders in terms of map positioning. Therefore, a swinging tempo in your favor. Number two, a little high-level concept, is speed. You need to do this fast. Kind of in line with unpredictability, you need to do this as fast as possible while you're executing it. Once you do, in the first 30 seconds, whatever you decide to do, whatever route you decide to take, which I'm going to show you some of my tried and true routes at the end of this video, you need to do this as fast as possible. There is no hesitation. If there's barbed wire or a banshee, you have to push through it. These are things you need to know. Now, if you're lucky in drone phase, you can drone out the route that you're going to take and how you're going to be unpredictable by this route because you may have to swing, switch it up on the fly, which is totally okay. But you need to understand that you have to do this in quick succession and very fast. There are no dilly-dallying. There's no time taking whatever you need to do. You've got to do this fast. And if that results in you dying, that's fine. But the whole point is that you're trying to take respect from the defenders in terms of map positioning and therefore swinging tempo in your favor. You don't even necessarily have to get a kill doing this. You simply need to put the tempo in your favor. If you rush onto site as quick as possible and you die, maybe the first engagement you take, you don't kill anyone, but you might be able to pull a roamer off roam. That's what I mean by tempo, is you're going to try to increase the tempo for your team instead of the defenders, which is hard to explain. Again, really muddy and really high level concept I'm trying to explain here. So I hope you guys are kind of understanding. That's number two is speed. So first one, unpredictability. Second one is speed. You've got to be fast while doing it and executing. And number three is knowledge. I'm not tight little piss in the garage. I'm not going to try to peddle you a course on how to make passive income. But knowledge is incredibly important. I'm not talking about knowledge of droning. That's information. That's a little bit different than knowledge. Knowledge is deep-rooted knowledge as in map knowledge and knowledge in terms of game sense. You need to understand who you're playing against, what ELO you're playing against, and how to execute these properly in the ELO. This is going to vary at every ELO. Something that works in gold might not be adaptable or be able to work in a higher ELO. Conversely, if you're a champion player and you do something like this, this might not work in a lower ELO because they might be setting this up. So what I mean knowledge is, first of all, you have to be unpredictable doing what you do. You have to be fast what you're doing, what you're doing, and you have to be knowledgeable of what you're doing while you're doing it. A great example of this, again, I'm going to bring up the clubhouse one because I think this is the quite literal golden example of this in action. I'm jumping through the window, and I know the angles that I have to clear. The first angle that I'm always going to clear is going to be immediately left, which is a line of sight into cash. Next angle I'm going to try to clear is going to be either... I'm going to try to wide and get a deep angle onto the guy wall. If there's a guy wall, sometimes there's not. Sometimes they're not bandit tricking or they're not juggling a kite. After that, I'm going to immediately try to get my pick rafters because I do know in almost every single scenario ever in whatever elo, there's a guy rafters because the traditional way that you play a map and the, the traditional way that they set that site up, which you can classify as knowledge, is they put one rafters to hold and contest garage, which is a position of contestion. And if you can get that pick, even if you die afterwards, the tempo is now immediately in the favor of your team because there's no room adjacent to the site that grants access to the site that is being contested by a defender. Therefore, tempo is in your favor. Map respect is in your favor in terms of positioning. I hope this all makes sense. It's kind of a really high-level topic, and explaining it out loud is, is kind of difficult because this is something that I do subconsciously, and a lot of players do subconsciously in terms of how they play the game. Hopefully, I'm able to share some of that knowledge with you. So, let's recap real fast before I go into a custom game, and I show you some of these routes that I use to obtain map knowledge, positioning, and map respect, and how to swing tempo in my favor by taking this map control. This isn't necessarily me getting picks. I will say, a lot of the time, this will result in you getting a frag. Guaranteed. Okay? Guaranteed. I can promise that. This a lot of time. Not all the time. We're going to go with 85% of the time. You're going to be getting an, at least an initial pick here, which is going to swing the tempo in your favor because of man advantage. Totally different aspect. But what I'm talking about is you're going to be getting the tempo and the, the, the way to move forward in these rounds because of the map position that you take. Now I'm going to go into a few maps. I'm going to show you five to six of my personal favorites. I'm not going to give you all my secrets, but I will be showing, obviously, the Clubhouse one and some others. So stay tuned. Hey, you there. May I interest you in some wares, potentially? Potentially some very cool items in game. This item being the Rainbow Six Siege Disrupt Gaming Ash R4C skin. Recently added to the game, 
It's like $7, and it's pretty good. Look at it. Look at it. It's on the screen right there. Bam. Look at that. It is beautiful. Now, listen. You don't hear it from me, okay? Yeah, but I've been told it gives you reduced recoil. Potentially. Pot all I'm saying, potentially. Right? That, hey, that's a chance I'm willing to take. $7 in the item shop. I would encourage you to buy it. And uh, with that being said, let's get back to our normally scheduled programming. Hope you enjoy the skin, and hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so the first map we're going to be on is going to be Clubhouse. I'm going to show two of these rushes that I like doing to get into the site. This is obviously to do everything that I've told you before. They're unpredictable, they're fast, and they use knowledge to your advantage. So usually people are playing, you know, here in this site. I feel this pretty self-explanatory because this is the cache source site by default. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to bring a Zofia or an operator with a Gon 6. I really like Zero and Lion. I like Zero's gun personally. And I like Lion's Utility. So what you're going to do is you're going to come up to the window here, shoot, vault in, and then press 1 or switch whatever weapon. And then you're going to clear as it follows. You look in. There's going to be a rotate here usually. Going to look left. You're then going to swing wide here. So look left, swing wide here, lean, and then look right. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to position yourself if there's no one here on rafters and then to take gunfights top red. And then take gunfights here, because this rotate should be open, or at least line of sight. That's what you're going to want to do for that one. So, the next rush I'm going to be showing you guys to swing tempo into your favor. Uh, this rush is both unexpected, uh, pretty fast, and, uh, you know, does require a little bit of knowledge. So, we're going to have to worry about, the only cams you're going to have to worry about in this rush, I should say, are going to be this one here, and going to be this one here. Because these cams get taken out by default, it is not that big of a deal. So. Sight is here, ignore this. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to open this window. You can knife it open, you can shoot it open. This rush is not for this site. This rush is for the top site. You're going to come through here, go around like this. You're not going to be spotted by the cam down there. Uh, you might get spotted by the cam by here, but it's unlikely if you tuck right here. There's a cam here in 90. That one's not going to be on it. It's for this. You're going to want to come in here, hard left through this window, and then you're going to want to position yourself right here, try to get the guy behind half wall and then take on fights individually. The reason why this is very effective is because if you do this fast enough, likely no one is going to be on cams, and they're going to be roaming. So that's where you do it. Also, this site does take some time to set up, so you might catch someone lacking, um, but the whole purpose of you doing this specific rush through there around here, it's pretty unpredictable, and it's also pretty fast. Uh, the knowledge that you're going to have to require to know uh, is really kind of cam placements and whether or not people are going to be on cam. So the faster you do this one, the better, because it's unlikely people are going to be on cams in the first 15 seconds of the round. That's going to allow you to get that and, you know, kind of profit. Um, this one is really more for information and kind of clearing utility. Uh, you're going to usually get a pick here because it's just not very common. And you will be incredibly lucky if this is already broken for you. So you don't make the breaking glass noise. And then that's what I would do. Try to get this pick here and then try to get the pick here. If you get the pick here, you can maybe snowball this into getting utility of the wall for your team or that they can execute from here. Because usually there's a guy here contesting this or there's a guy behind a shield contesting this wall. So it's pretty good for that because, again, you can jump in and then clear this area and you'll be pretty good. You will probably get shot from over here in offices and archives, but that's not that big of a deal. Okay, so the next rush I'm going to be showing you is on Canal. Canal has been getting a lot of popularity recently and ranked with the map pool edition Favela. Canal is getting rotated in more because Favela is showing up in the queue. This is good as I think Canal is a very good map and I think there's a very solid rush strategy here. This strategy is very unpredictable. And is uh, pretty fast too. So a lot of times you're going to be shooting this cam here. That's the only cam you have to worry about. And because it's a default outside cam, no one is going to suspect anything if it is shot. Next up, come here to scuba window. You're going to break this. I recommend doing it with an explosive. You can knife it open, however. Sprint up yellow. You're going to continue going here. There are no cams in this area, so you're going to be not seen. And then sprint up blue. Normally, there's going to be a player playing here in a new bridge or a player playing in printer. So what you're going to want to do here is make your way up here and then try to dispose of this player. Conversely, another thing you can do is, remember how we talked about fast and slow? You don't have to take this fast. Once you get up to blue, you can then crouch to mitigate noise propagation and then take it slow. This angle right here is usually a hard angle to take. And if you take it fast, you're likely to die. If you're taking it slow, you can clear and then you can get up to black boxes here and then take a more advantageous position. Again, still, if there's no one contesting you, crouch all the way up into sight and try to work picks from there. This is going to be relatively unexpected and usually there is only one piece of barb here. And a lot of time, people don't even put barb here as they put barb on blue and then either play in printer or new bridge in the case that just put barbed blue stairs and then walk away you're free to have control over this entire area of the map and get your teammates in through printer and then start making a contest or an assault here on new bridge all the way up to horseshoe 
highly recommend doing this one. This is my personal favorite one on Canal and is really good for the top site here. Of course, the bombs are here to show you, but this is probably the best for this site. Moving on to the next map. This Russian coastline is going to be for the downstairs site. Uh, this one is actually a little bit less common. So a lot of people know this as blacktop drop or plat drop. Drop down here, go here, and then you're going to be taking your way all the way from main lobby slash reception into bathroom. Now, a lot of the time, people do do a soft room here on main lobby behind reception desk, which makes a lot of sense. It's a pretty good contest because obviously the door to the outside. But if you're dropping from blacktop down here, you're usually in a really prime position to get a kill. And in addition to that, they can only escape one way here. So if you have a teammate on this double door where you're doing this, the execution will go flawlessly in most cases, and then you're able to take bathroom and then contest the site. It's a pretty fast one, and it is pretty safe. Uh, the only camera that you have to worry about is outside cams, and you can just, you know, deal those as you want. Um, also, another thing you can do is if you don't want to drop down here to go main lobby, you can drop down into courtyard, and then you can vault over here. And usually because someone is always going to be playing in Sunrise, this one is also as good, if not better, for getting kills. However, you're going to be worried about this cam here, cool vibes, and blue. So a lot of these are kind of pretty high contest areas and are less safe than just going main lobby. That's why I personally go... That's why I personally like going main lobby. But you're going to be able to take man advantage and swing tempo in your flavor if you do either of these ones because, I mean, right here, that's a free pick. And then obviously, coming over here, that's a free pick. So yeah. Also, buy the Disrupt Gaming skin in the store if you haven't. I don't know why you're not doing that. Look, look how cool it is. It's like, wow. It's so pretty and shiny and carbon fiber and gold and, and it's just nice. It's a nice looking skin. So buy it. And with that being said, let's go on the next map. So finally, last but not least, what I'll be showing you today is on Cafe. Again, I'm not showing you one for every map. So the only cameras you're going to have to worry about here are the outside one, and there is one here. This is for the downstairs basement site. I guess you could sell bakery, basement, whatever. Uh, we're going to call it bakery. I'm going to hop over here, and then you're going to hop over here. Do not shoot this camera. It's one right there. I'm going to come down here, down brown, and then you're going to either go whiskey side, or you're going to come here to coat. I like wide swing wisp because you might be able to catch someone rotating here. You're then going to get into here and then try to take the fight. Guy freezer, the guy bunker, or the guy sinks. So that's that's your goal. And then trying to get the site open end doing that is going to allow you to swing tempo in your favor. Even if you don't do that and you can get all the way down brown, you're going to have a foothold in VIP. And then in Christmas, uh, doing this will allow you to you know start moving your team in from bottom white, VIP window reception and so on and so forth and then try to take a whiskey take over that's what i recommend you guys doing i hope this helped you guys out i hope you guys found this video informational and helpful and if you guys did if you guys think this video deserves a rating please leave one according to what you believe and with that being said guys it's been vexing it's been out i hope this helps you understand a little bit more on how to actually play attack and a win it's okay to be aggressive and that's what i'm trying to tell you guys that being said have fun with these tips and use them to the best of your advantage